Branchy doesn't care what his name is, he just wants to know what he is. Why he's a centaur. And besides, Branchy is badass. Just go with it. Hey, this is a series where you can regrow your limbs and you can literally glue yourself back together when you're cut in half. Seriously, that actually happens. So just go with it. Go with it or else I'm going to use my sonic screwdriver on you. Toriko chapter 229 versus lightning. Okay, I know you have questions about Toriko, but if we have to go through all of them, we're gonna be here all day and we still got fairy tale to review, okay? I'm sorry for using the sonic screwdriver on you, it's just that we didn't have all day. So, we're good? Okay, just for today. I really like it. It's fine. Anyway, back with the chapter. So, um, yeah, Elg has regenerated into multiple Elgs, and one of them actually uses the Hiraki Kick at Branchi. Branchi came to the conclusion of how Elg was able to regenerate into multiple beings. And apparently it's because of the no Daraike gene, which is a gene where organisms can use to regenerate into multiple beings. Like say if, a, uh, if uh, you cut a body up in 10 different pieces, then each of that piece will regenerate into a new body. So 10 pieces equals 10 bodies. We also get to learn how Branchi was able to use his electricity to um, dodge some of uh, Elg's attacks. He, had, he makes a path in the air with his electricity called a stepped ladder. And then he uses the return stroke um, to um, create a discharge so that he could be able to dodge the attack. And how um, Elg was able to cut uh, Baranchi's cheek, it was because, well, there are already multiple Elg clones attacking him. And I guess one of them cut his cheek, so I guess that would explain like, why Elg was able to cut him, even with his um, electricity to dodge it. Baranchi uses the Heiretsu Eleki Cutter, cut and electrocute all the Elk clones. And then Baranchi uses the Furai Kam Kamaitachi, the um, Wind Lightning Sickle Weasel, to create blades of electricity, slicing all the Elk clones once again. But because the Elk was hit by Baranchi's lightning so many times that um, eventually his body became immune to the electricity, because um, since he, because of the immortality and the fact that he lived so long, his body was able to adapt to uh, the electricity and uh, created properties um, to resist it. And apparently Branchi is losing power from those batteries of his. I guess without those batteries, he wouldn't be able to use his electricity and amplify any of his attacks. So Elg then- <laughs> Can we move? Do not show me that again. Can we? Let's let's just move on. So all the old clones uh, beat the living crap out of Branch. Punch after punch, kick after kick, until he was beaten to a bloody pulp. But this is when things start getting interesting and kind of confusing when you think about it. So um, the old clones are about to finish um, Branchy off, and they ask him what was his name again. 
So uh, Bronchi tells him, all of a sudden all this electricity was coming out of his body. Apparently, um, Bronchi has a special ability that he can, um, he can generate electricity by using any kind of power. Wind, solar, water, fire. And um, basically, he used the energy from his surrounding, from the outside, and used that and converted that into electricity. And where did he get that energy from? From Elg's attacks. Yes, he used all the energy from Elg's attacks, he absorbed all that, and converted it into electricity. So he wanted Elg to beat the living shit out of him so he could obtain all that electricity. Also, how the hell do you convert the energy? And yeah, it does make sense. Um, and then again, how the heck does his body convert like and that energy, that kind of energy, from Elg's attacks to electricity? So then, uh, Baranchi uses the Ogi Choku Retsu Dai Tai Dengeki, the translation secret technique series great electrification attack. Massive electric explosion! Just, yes, a massive electric explosion just comes right down at all the Elg clones, electrocuting all of them. But, wait a minute. Don't the Elg clones have, some, have an immunity against the electricity? The resistance that they obtained from that electricity was not enough um, to stop this type of electrical current. And also... Because of the lucky cutter that he used against all the elk clones, um, all the elk clones were bleeding from those cuts, um, releasing their electric resistance. Okay, okay, does that make sense? I mean, all you have to do is to make them vulnerable to lightning or electricity is to cut them so that they could bleed out their electric resistance. Yeah, this is why I don't question a lot in Toriko. It, it can confuse you despite how epic it sounds. But then again, you have to question it because... But then again, this is Toriko. So, so despite Elg's uh, regenerate, ge regenerating cells, um, no matter how many times the cells will regenerate, th this attack will keep on going because the electric current from that attack will permanently stay in Elg forever. So no matter how many times he regenerates, his body is going to keep on being electrocuted for all eternity. Okay. I don't know how that works, but that actually sounds freaking awesome. So in the end, all those elk clones, they are they will forever feel excruciating pain for being electrocuted from a massive electrical attack. That is quite a way to go. Yeah, I don't know what is worse, an immortal being tortured physically or an immortal being tortured mentally. Like, um, like, uh, Toguro from Yu Yu Hakusho, or, uh, Zyle Apuro with, uh, against, when he fought against Mayori. Well, granted, uh, Zyle is not really immortal, but from what he had to go through in the end of that fight, yeah, that is quite a way to go, too. So... Hey, what it was wor what is worse? What Elg is going through or what Zyle Opero is going through or what Elder Guru went through. So in the end, all the Elgs are being electrocuted. Baranchi just walks away. So even though he was being to a bloody pulp, he, he's just walking off like it was nothing, being a badass. And the chapter ends with him asking Elg, what was your name again? So yeah, that is Toriko chapter 229. What did I think about this chapter? I liked it. Honestly, yes, there were some parts that were a bit confusing, uh, but, you know, considering this is Toriko and all, yeah, their logic can be quite confusing, but it's Toriko, so what are you gonna do? Now, the fight between um, Elg and Ranchi, now that it is finally over, does this mean we're gonna go back to Coco and Grimpatch, or are we going back to Toriko and Stardune? But with this fight, I actually did enjoy it, although, I honestly, I kind of enjoyed the fight between Sunny and Tommy Rod more. But I, I did like this fight too, even though it only lasted like, what, two chapters? But then again, since Baranchi was a recently introduced character, I think the fights that involve with the main minor characters or the main characters, they're gonna last a little longer. Poor Elg! I forgot to feel bad for him! 
He is going to be electrocuted for all eternity. I don't know how that works, but that not only is that freaking awesome, but that is quite a way to go for an immortal. Branchy, Tengu Branchy. Oh my god. Is it honest? Okay, it's official. Loxus, I'm sorry. You were my favorite lightning user, but ever since that chapter came out, you've bumped down. Okay? Tengu Branchy is my number one favorite lightning user. Second favorite is Raikage, because he's badass. I thought this chapter was a good conclusion to um, the fight. Lightning attacks, freaking awesome. And Brachi was a freaking badass as always. I love this new character. <laughs> but you know, now that this chapter is end, now we can move on to another fight. Torgo versus Starjune, or Grimpatch versus uh, Coco, or Setsuno versus Chio. I think that's all the fights that matter at the moment. Or we could go back to what the hell Neo is up to and whether Joa has appeared or not. So overall, this was a, this was a pretty good chapter, a great conclusion to another fight. Now we can move on to another fight and probably move on with the plot. I mean, let's see. Um, Bishoku Kai currently have lost two of its members. One of the chefs have been um, incapacitated for now. And another one is stabbed, was stabbed through a spear. But then again, there's still the matter with Nitro and the new group Neo. Oh, and uh, what is going on with uh, Matsan and Rain? So yeah, that is Toriko chapter 229. I'm going to spoil 27, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.